Hey Math Marbles, welcome back for another math mini lesson. I'm Sarah Fuentes, your personal math coach. In our last lesson, we talked about right triangles. Today, we're gonna work with acute triangles and try to figure out their area. So welcome to lesson three of Geometry 101. Here's our big question for today. How do we find the area of an acute triangle? How is this different than finding the area of a right triangle? Here are our learning targets for today, Math Marbles. Math Marbles will decompose acute triangles into two triangles and find the area of both parts to find the area of a whole triangle. In the last lesson, we learned how to find the area of a right triangle. Today, we're gonna find the area of acute triangles. So take 30 seconds in your notebook and we're gonna do a stop and jot. And you're gonna answer the question, how might today's lesson be different than lesson two? In today's lesson, we're gonna talk about our second triangle, which are acute triangles. These are triangles that have angles that are less than 90 degrees. And it's time for hot spots in the lesson. And the first hot spot we're gonna address is, what if there's no base? We're always looking at bases and heights with these shapes, but what if there isn't one? What do we do? Okay, so for this type of problem, we're just going to have to look at it and even though we know we have to find the base and the height because we've consistently looked for base and height, our first problem is this triangle doesn't have one. So why don't we just change our perspective? Remember, what if we can just rotate the page and just move it around? As long as you can move the page around, you can identify a base. And as long as you have a base, you're going to be able to find a height. All we're going to do is take the lowest point to the highest point to find the height. And that might be an outside or even the inside. But for this first part, we're just going to find the base by rotating this triangle. And you can do that on your paper. Another hot spot. Coach, I don't know how to find the area of acute triangles. We only did right triangles. How do I do these? They don't make rectangles. Okay, Math Marbles, watch how I'm gonna take this triangle and I'm gonna break it up. That's what decomposition means because I don't know how to find the area of this type of triangle yet, but I do know how to find the area of a right triangle and that has a right angle in it. But this triangle doesn't have right angles. It has three angles that are all less than 90 degrees. But what I could do is I could break this triangle to two pieces and make two right triangles. I'd have one right triangle here and a second one here. So that's what I'm gonna do with my strategy. Just watch. I'm gonna just break this in half. And remember, if I'm breaking this in half, that means I'm also breaking this part. And this is just directly in half, so this part over here is gonna be eight and 25 hundredths, and this part here is eight and 25 hundredths. If you're not sure, use your calculator to do this part out. And now I'm gonna go and use my formula for right triangles, base times height divided by two. So again, here's my base and here's my height. It's the two that go around the right angle. So let's put in eight and 25 hundredths times 12 and eight tenths. And I'm gonna divide that entire all right, by two. So I'm gonna use my calculator on this and I get 103 and 125 thousandths divided by two. So this part over here, and it, it does look ugly, so I'm gonna write the entire number. Here it is, 51 and 5,625 ten thousandths. It's a very big number. I'm not gonna round it just because I'm gonna put these two parts together. And now let's do the same thing with the other part. Same thing, same formula. Area equals base times height divided by two. So I'm gonna have eight and 25 hundredths times 12.8. So what do you already notice divided by two? 
I notice that it is already the exact same problem as over here. It didn't change. So I'm, I already know what my answer is gonna be. It's gonna be this number here. So now I'm gonna put these two pieces together because if this is the area for this part and this is the area for this part, then what would the entire area be? So I'm just gonna write my number down. Oops, so six. 25, 6, 25, and I'm gonna add them together. Five, two, one, three, and 10. So I end up with this number over here, and this is gonna be centimeters squared. That is my area. So I'm doing triangle one and triangle two to get my total. My total area, which is 103 and 125 thousandths centimeters squared. Oh my God, decomposition, there are so many steps. Is there a faster way to do this than breaking up a triangle every single time? Okay, so we already saw that we can take a triangle like this and just break it into two triangles and we can just find the area of the first triangle, triangle one, and then we can just find the area of triangle two and if we add them together, we're gonna to get the whole triangle. But that's a lot of steps. So why don't we see if we can do it all in one step? So let's see. The first thing I'm gonna to want to do with this is let's just change the position. We're gonna just rotate it so that we can see that it has a base. I wanna make sure that we have a base um, to do this part. And remember before we were trying to figure out why is it that area of a triangle, right triangle, is base times height divided by two. And what we knew was if we took those triangles, and when we had a right triangle, we knew that it was always half. Let's put that in there. We knew that if I had just the base and the height, I would get the area of a whole rectangle. And then because I only wanted half of it, I would divide it by two. So this is just my area of a rectangle. And then I'm dividing it by two because I just want half of it, the triangle. Um, so what happens in this case, if I were to put these two together, if I were to have another triangle that was another seven and four tenths, and you can, you can already see that this part is slanted, so I know this is gonna be slanted here. So when I draw it, I don't have a rectangle, but I do have a shape. This is a parallelogram. We talked about this before in our very first lesson. Parallelograms are quadrilaterals and we know how to find their area. It's just base times height. So I would still do the same thing. I would still multiply seven and four tenths miles and I would still use the height 8.5 miles. I would just do that. So if I only want this half, then what am I gonna do? The exact same thing just like with rectangles. I'm gonna just divide it by two. So it doesn't matter if it's an acute triangle or a right triangle, I'm gonna use the same formula because base times height is the area for any parallelogram, not just rectangles, it's any parallelogram. So if I wanna find the area for my triangle, then I'm just gonna do base times height divided by two so you do not have to decompose this into two pieces and do extra work instead we're going to do it all in just one step so area equals base times height divided by two our base is seven and four tenths and our height is eight and five tenths remember it has to be that way because if this is our 90 degree angle then we know that it's these two that are around it, the base and the height. That's how I always find my height. I'm looking at my 90 degree angles. Okay, so let's go back into our work for a second and we're gonna divide this by two, taking out my trusty calculator because we're dealing with some decimals today and I'm putting in 7.4 times 8.5 and I'm getting 62.9, or I'll say it right, 62 and nine tenths. And it looks like I'm done, but I need one more step. So remember, that's gonna give me a whole parallelogram. So I have to divide this by two. So let's find half of it now. And I get my area is 31 and 45 square miles. 
So I can do this in one step. I don't have to decompose it, but I just wanted you to see how I could just break this apart to understand this type of triangle. Okay, Mac Marbles, you're almost ready to start your independent practice, so let's make sure we have the keys to unlocking this skill. First, remember you can always change the perspective. So if you don't see a base or a height, you can rotate the shape. It doesn't just mean the point you see in the bottom. Look around, look for a base, and look for a height. Two, decomposition is a great concept builder for finding area of acute triangles. So if this works for you, follow the three steps. Break the acute triangle into two right triangles. That means you're gonna find the height and it's gonna be perpendicular to the base and make two right angles. Then, second step, you're gonna check that the base is also broken into two small parts. You can just cut it in half. It's not gonna change your area if you just break that base in half. Some triangles are gonna have two parts, so you're gonna be able to see two different numbers, two different bases for each triangle. But sometimes it's tricky and it's just one, so you can just break it in half. And our last step, three, we're gonna find the area of both triangles and then just add them together. So if decomposition works for you, jot down those three steps. Last key to unlocking this skill. The fastest way to find area of an acute triangle is to use the same formula as area of a right triangle. So jot this down in your notebooks, Mac Marbles. Area equals base times height divided by two. That is also the area of an acute triangle. Why? Because base and height will give us the area of a parallelogram, and then we divide it by two because we only want half of that area, just the acute triangle. Okay, we're gonna do one last check for understanding. Before you start that independent practice, I want you to think, how are the areas of these two triangles connected? Think about what you know about area of right triangles and area of acute triangles, what connects them, what's similar. Take just a few moments and jot it down in your notebooks. Then get ready to start your independent practice, okay? You have everything you need now to start your practice. Now remember, you may make some mistakes and that's okay. Some of the problems will have fractions or decimals, so feel free to use a calculator to check your work, but always use your habits and your notes to help you. The more practice you get, the easier it's gonna get and the more it's gonna stick in your memory and the more successful you can be. You got this math marbles.